Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Behind me, 2008 Toyota Prius, we're gonna run a fun little experiment. This engine has an engine knock. I believe it's coming from the connecting rod. That definitely bottom end is what it sounds like. I'll run you over real quick, let you listen to it, but I believe it's bottom end related. What I wanna know in this experiment is can we pull off the oil pan? Now there's two oil pans, a lower, little dinky, cute little oil pan, but then the bigger one. Can we pull that bigger oil pan off, get access to our bottom end connecting rod bearings and figure out which one is bad, if that really is bad. Now to me, it does sound like a bottom end noise. I could be wrong, but that's what it sounds like. So can we even get access to it without pulling the engine? Even get access to it without pulling off the timing cover? That would be the bonus. So follow along, let's find out. All right, I'm gonna start the engine up real quick. I'll put the microphone next to the engine so you can hear it loud and clear, and you'll see what noise I'm talking about. All right, I'm gonna set the microphone right here. So looking under here, it looks doable, but I'm not sure. We have this torque strut that needs to come off because it's connected to the pan here. We have this pan bolt goes into the tranny. There's another one here goes in the tranny, two on the other side, just the same. We need to pull the filter off. Of course, we'll be draining the oil. There's a hidden bolt underneath the oil filter. And then it looks like the rest are just bolts holding it into the block. Uh, under the pan here, there's a couple more bolts that will get off and the AC compressor has to come off. Um, on this side, uh, you can't see, I'll, I'll move you around at a later time so you can see, but there's a couple bolts for the timing chain cover that also need to come off. And that's my biggest concern is with all the bolts off, is it too squished in between the transmission and the timing cover to pop out? Or is it something that, that can come out without pulling the timing cover? Cause the goal is to remove as little as possible to make this a trick repair. So let me get started. I'll drain the oil and then we'll start just removing uh, all the peripherals until all the bolts are out. See if it comes out. We'll also want to look for any metal shavings that come out in the oil. That'll be a clue to things as well. It's got this little washer that doesn't want to come off. Okay. So far it just looks really black. All right, so our first move is to take this plastic shield off. We have to get access to our AC compressor, the top bolts. I think it'd be easier with this off. And then also over here, we have our timing cover bolts. Uh, we need to pull this off. So a couple of bolts, looks like 10 millimeter. And a couple of push pins. Those are always a challenge of the screw type. So they have a Phillips head on them, but I don't always like to screw back out. There's just a couple more clips here on the side of the wheel well. Those come off. Let's see what else. All right, perfect. So that should probably be out of the way enough. If you want, you can remove it even more, but I don't know if it really has to. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull off the AC compressor and just suspend it aside. They look like 12s. So there's just three bolts, one on top, two on the bottom. I'm gonna get a bungee cord. Maybe I'll just use this for like a brake caliper. You know, it actually might just suspend there just like that. I think that's out of the way. Sweet, well that was easy. Let's pull our torque strut bolts out and our bell housing bolts just to make sure we can get those ones. 19 millimeter. Use a breaker bar for these. Uh, it wasn't too bad. Try this one here. Oh no, not too bad. All right, I'll just loosen this back one so we can pivot the whole thing down. Nice. 
And they have these nuts on the back side with that little wing on it. So you can't pull the nut off. You have to loosen it from the bolt. Let's pop those out. Nice. We'll just leave that hanging. Okay, bell housing bolts look like a 14. Okay, this one. Oh, easy. Nice. I'm waiting for the shoe to drop because this has been too easy so far. So now the only area left of concern is that front timing cover. So let's make sure we can get to all those bolts as well. So the lighting's not gonna be the best, but we have this for our crank position sensor, 10 mil. Doesn't look like I can get to it with this. Let me pull the connector off, maybe that's... So on the connector, there's a little white tab that you pull back and that releases it. Let me could push that aside. Pull the bolt off. Perfect. Well, that's a really long one. So that one... Can't quite get, I might have to get with a wrench. Got it, got four out of the five. Let me see about that one again. Maybe I can get... I don't think so, I think the crank's just a little too much in the way. I'm grab a wrench. Ugh. Okay, nice. Man, Toyota, you're making me love you, buddy. I'm just a little bit at a time on this one, but still not too bad. It's like just not quite enough to pinch it with my fingers. Let me get two hands. Yeah, there we go. All right, perfect. That's all the timing bolts we need to get off. Now let's pull our little, little buddy pan off. Okay, these are all 10 millimeter. So a metal putty knife works the best. What we want to do is get something in between the main oil pan and this little oil pan. Now it is just silicone holding it together. So maybe just, yeah, this isn't, isn't quite working. There we go, oh, oil. Let me move you just a little. pull this in the light and see if we could see any metal fragments at all. Metal fragment, you can see right here. A little fragment. Right there, a little fragment. So there's a little in here. Looks like uh, bearing material. So underneath this pan are those three bolts that we have to get off. Looks like from here everything is a 12 millimeter and it's just our perimeter bolts. Now there is the dipstick uh, right here poking through. So we'll see how easy that is to come off on its own, but we may have to pull that tube out uh, from the top. We'll, we'll see how that all works out. We may still do that before putting everything back together, but getting it off may not be necessary. Oh, I forgot, underneath the oil filter, we gotta get that out. Let me get that Allen size. That is a 12 millimeter Allen. Ugh. There we go. You just pulling this out is the threads for the uh, oil filter. The tip of it, there's a little Allen key, 12 millimeter. That comes out, there's a bolt underneath. Okay, I'm gonna go around and just loosen them. Oh, that wasn't too bad. All right, let me double check that was all of them. I think it is. Hmm. Here we go. You just gotta find a place to pry on it. They give you a place. Where did I put my prying apparatus? Here it is. Okay, right here. Okay. So 
there's a little plate right here. It looks like where a starter motor would go, but because this is a hybrid, there's no starter motor. So let me pull that plate off and see if that can help us out. Okay, got it. Let's see if that gave me anything else to pry off. Not really. Well, is this the end of the experiment? Not being able to pry on anything to get it off. There's like a really good spot here, but it's just one spot. I need more spots. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Might be coming out. Nice. It's a tight fit. And I kind of suspected that because of the timing cover still on. If the timing cover was off, it might be a little different. I just need somewhere to pry on this side, that's all. Right in the front. Okay. Nice. Oh, oh, leaking a lot of oil. Wasn't expecting that. Okay, get the pan back under. Whoa, oh, guess what, fellas? Guys and gals. Got it. <laughs> Sweet. All right, there it is. And it's a glory. So connecting rod caps, you got one, two, three, and then the other one's uh, right up here. Now these right here, if you can listen, I don't know if you can hear it. No sound, nice and tight. But this one here, if you can listen. I don't know if you can hear that. And then this one here, both super loose. So hopefully you can hear that. What I'm gonna do anyway is plastic gauge every single one and we'll get a more accurate reading. Uh, this right here for your dipstick, the tube, actually goes into the block, not into the uh, oil pan. So that's good, so it didn't have to come out. So I think just putting it back on, uh, we don't have to worry about it. All right, well, I'm gonna take a quick lunch and when I get back, let's uh, plastic gauge this stuff. See what we got. And just while I'm under here, cause this is so cool, I love when vehicles can do this, that this engine is rebuildable right here. You don't have to remove the engine. You can pull the head off, pistons can get pushed right out the top. So this is a complete, doable, rebuildable engine in vehicle. I love it. All right, these are a 10 mil 12 point socket. I wanna just pull this cap off. There we go, and we're gonna do one at a time. There we go. What I wanna check is to make sure that the crank is still good. And check any scoring in the crank. Now, as far as orientation, if we do one at a time, we don't have to worry about them getting mixed up, but we can accidentally flip the cap 180. It has a little protrusion on one side that faces towards the crank. Let's see what we got. Hey, nice. So it might just be a toast bearing and not a crankshaft. Yeah, the crank looks good. Nice. And the connecting rod also looks good. So I think just a set of bearings in this bad boy. Let me pull you out, I'll show you this uh, bearing. This camera doesn't do a good job at zooming in, but hopefully you can see some of those gouges. Just chewed up the bearing. The crank looks good. The cap looks good, connecting rod cap. That looks really good. You can still see the stamp in it really well. So I don't think uh, we have any issue with our connecting rod. Just a bearing, just a bad bearing. A couple of bad bearings. So I don't really think I have to plastic gauge anything. Uh, I was worried about the crank. I don't think I have to be. So I'm just gonna get a um, new set of bearings. All right, so it's been about a week. That's how long it took to get the new bearings in. They're kind of hard to find, but we got them. I thought I was recording when I was doing the other bearings, but I wasn't, which really sucks. But we're gonna do this one next. So I got the bolt out. Now this was one of the ones that did not have a bad bearing. Replacing it anyway, we'll give it a good inspection. Looks good, that's what we expect anyway. And then we'll push the piston up. Oh, there it comes out a bearing. And then over, and then back down. I don't know if you can see it, but it gives you perfect access to the bottom of your connecting rod for that top bearing. Oh yeah, see these, these are chewed up too. I don't know if you can see, probably not, but their clearance must still be good enough to not make any noise. So we're just gonna wipe the journal off. Just really good, nice and clean. Perfect. We'll put our new bearing on. Now there is a little groove in a key on the bearing. We just line them up, push them in. Okay, easy peasy. 
Now I'm using assembly lube. It's this red stuff. Stuff is super gooey and just thick. It's crazy stuff. If you don't have assembly lube, that's okay. Uh, gear oil works really well. Uh, regular oil is also acceptable. Just as long as it has a lube so you're not putting a dry bearing on. There we go. Back on. Now we'll put it on the cap. On the cap, got the keyway just like that. Put a little assembly lube on it. Rub it around. Perfect. Put our bolts back in. So we'll get our initial 11 foot pounds. Wipe off the heads. We'll mark it. And then we'll get our 90. So these two are easy because they're facing down. The other two are facing up. So what we have to do is turn the crank manually to get these to come down. So these will go up, the two ends will come down, and then we'll get those exactly the same way. Super easy. We just wanna make sure that we are uber clean because these tolerances are so tight, the tiniest piece of grit can chew up your new bearing. So we want it to just be as clean as possible. All right, that's the nicest looking bearing yet. Push this up and over and back down. Perfect. I'll wipe this connecting rod. I'll wipe the journal off really well. I'm putting in our bearing just like the other. Little notch key thing. Perfect. A little assembly lube. Push it back up and over and then back down. Perfect. I'll put a little assembly lube on the connecting rod cap and its new bearing. Like that. Nummy, nummy, nummy. Now I'll put that on. All right, the bearings are done. Now let's just prep our surface for our pan to go back on. We'll be putting RTV all around. I was thinking of putting RTV on the block. That way I don't have to worry about accidentally uh, scraping or bumping up against something with the pan because the block will be stationary. The pan will be moving all around. So putting it on the block, I think, is the ticket. Or maybe a little of both. Little on the block, little on the pan. So I'm just gonna wipe all the oil off. Get it all really good. I'll get brake clean and brake clean all this too. So where we want RTV is all along the block and then here on the front timing cover. We we'll want a little dab of RTV in the corner of our rear main seal as well. Just on the two corners. Let me get a little scraper and we'll get some of this old RTV off. Okay, we're ready for our TV. I put a rag in here. Oil kept wanting to spill out and get on this surface. So I'm gonna take that rag out just before I put the uh, pan in. But we're just gonna go around. It doesn't take a lot, just a little. Okay, and then I'm gonna put a little on the timing cover as well. I have a feeling a lot of that'll scrape off though. Let me put it on just a little. Now for the timing cover, because it's gonna be a super tight fit, I'm just gonna have a, a little slim film. I'm not gonna have a raised bead because I think that'll just come right off anyway. Okay, so now I'm going to, on the oil pan, the top of it, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Just a very, very tiny, tiny bead all the way around, and then just a little tiny film where the oil or the timing cover goes. And then we're ready to slap it on, try to slide it in. Don't forget you have two O-rings here and then one O-ring in the front of the oil pan. Those are important to make sure they go back in. Okay, hopefully this works. Moment of truth. Well, we have to take the timing cover off. Let's find out and pull this out. That would be important. Okay, I feel like I'm close. I think they just need to go in the dowels, is all it is. Nice. I think that's it. That might be it. If I can thread some of these in. Now there are different lengths. You just have to figure out which ones go where. Don't forget the one in the oil filter housing. Put our cover bolts on. 
All right, sweet. I'm gonna get a torque spec on this pan, torque it all down, and then we'll put our lower pan on. Our crank position sensor can go back in. These two bolts can go back in. Our torque strut here can go back in. Oil filter on, AC compressor, all that good stuff. We're buttoning it up. I uh, thought you guys were with me. The camera died. Let me spin you around and just show you what I did. So pretty much everything is buttoned up down here. Got the bottom oil pan on. Uh, these are 18 foot pounds. All the big oil pan are 18 foot pounds. These are 18 foot pounds as well. These are 80 inch pounds. Uh, these I just tightened. I, I didn't have a torque spec. So that's everything under here. We're going to go ahead, fill it up with oil and then start it up. All right, start it up. Sounds pretty good. All I hear is a little exhaust leak, but I don't hear that knocking noise anymore. So let's take it on a test drive. All right, we are back from a good test drive. Just wanna make sure so our rear main is not leaking. We have no oil in the back. Just looking around the perimeter. Looking around the perimeter. Okay. Hey, we're looking really good all around. Come to the front. Nice. This little shield is kind of in your way, but take my word for it. We're not leaking up front either. This thing is completely sealed. Nice. All right, we did it. This makes me super happy. The manual said it's about a 25 hour job to change out these connecting rod bearings. We did it in about five hours ish, a few hours to pull everything apart. Of course, we had to wait for the parts. You can pre-order this before you start this project. Now, that took about a week. But once we got them, a few hours to put it back together. So yeah, maybe five, five, six hours to do it all. So that is pretty sweet. So a few things I learned. Um, if you are doing this, just keep in mind that when you put it all back together, it is a super tight fit. In the front, there's that little O-ring for the oil pump. That O-ring wanted to keep popping out. So just keep that in mind. Really the best way, like 100% best way to do this, would be to pull the timing cover off. Now that recover, uh, requires pulling off the valve cover, the crank pulley, all that kind of stuff. But honestly, if you're doing this job, just pull the timing cover off. It really will make for a, a cleaner job, so to speak. I don't know if that makes sense, but it can be done without it. So that, that's really what this was, like a cool experiment. Can it be done? Yes, it can. Should it be done? Well, that's up to you. The noise is gone, and I think this thing has another 100, 200,000 miles uh, left on it. Brand new rod bearings. It has 250 right now. A lot of people ask, well, what, how many miles are on it? 250 at the moment. Uh, and as black as that oil was, I imagine they didn't really uh, keep up on their maintenance. At least not lately. All right, well, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one.